Welcome back, it's Professor Silva. Today we're going to cover three basic types of RAID arrays, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 0. So let's start with probably the easiest RAID level to understand, which is RAID 1. In a RAID 1 array, you've got two physical disks that appear to be one logical drive to the operating system. So in this example, we've got two 10 terabyte drives. These drives mirror each other, meaning that when data is written to one drive, like this, it is simultaneously written to the other drive. This also means that when you lose one drive, you don't lose your data because it's still on the first drive. So when you physically reinsert a new disk into that array, the data is rebuilt and it's on the secondary drive again as well. In a RAID 1 array, because you are copying data off of one drive onto the next and keeping it in sync, you've only got half the capacity of the total storage space. In other words, if you have two 10 terabyte drives for 20 terabytes, you lose half the storage and you have a total of 10 terabytes in that array. Now in a RAID 0 array, data is written across both drives at the same time, meaning that if you lose one of the physical disks, the data is destroyed. So for example, if you write a file, let's say to your C drive, and the C drive is made up of a two disk RAID 0 array, that file is actually gonna be written across both drives. So when one of these physical drives fails, you actually lose the file as well because half the data would have been written on that secondary drive. Now, one of the big benefits to a RAID 0 array is the space. Because the drives are striped, you're basically getting the maximum amount of storage capacity you can get out of the drives. So for example, here we've got two 10 terabyte drives. That means that you're gonna get 20 terabytes of local storage. Again, just keep in mind when one of those drives fails, you lose all the data on that array. The next type of RAID array is RAID 5. And a RAID 5 array has a minimum of three disks. And you get all of the storage minus one of the disks capacities. So for example, in this array, we've got three disks, three 10 terabyte drives. So we have a total of 30 terabytes. But since each disk is 10 terabytes, we lose one of the drive storage capacity for parity calculation. And that means that we get 20 terabytes of usable space. So even though we have only 20 terabytes of usable space, we can expand out the RAID 5 array simply by adding more disks. And the best part about RAID 5 is we can continue to expand this and maintain that protection of being able to rebuild the array in the event of a loss of a single drive. So here with these three drives, if we add an additional drive, we now have a 30 terabyte RAID 5 array with the protection of single disk failure. Now let's take a quick look at exactly how that parity calculation is done. So in a RAID 5 array, you've got three disks. So here I have example drive one, drive two, and drive three. So in drive one, we have certain data, right? We have value one, five, and two. In drive two, we've got these values. In drive three, we've got these values. So in this example, the parity calculation is gonna be a sum. In an actual RAID 5, it doesn't work exactly like this, but it's pretty similar. So we'll use this just for example's sake. So here we get one plus two plus three equals six. It's very easy to understand. And same thing here. So what we're looking at is basically a calculation of each one of the drive's values. In other words, the data that's on those drives and then a subsequent parity value that's calculated out of that. Now let's simulate a drive failure. So let's presume drive two dies. We lose all the data on that drive. Now, because our parity calculation is essentially just a sum of the other two values that were on the remaining drives, we can actually calculate what that data must have been. So even though we don't have the secondary drive, it's died, we now reinsert a new disk, and that new disk needs to calculate the data that was there before. We can actually perform the same calculation that we used to make the parity drive and find out what that data was. So in this example, we have a result of six, which is a sum. So we can say one plus what plus three equals six. Obviously that value is two, we put two in. And same thing here, five plus what plus two equals 10, that value is gonna be three. And then here we've got two plus something plus two equals nine, and obviously that value must be five. So now we can pretty clearly see that this drive failed, but we were actually able to rebuild it based on the parity data that we knew here. And actually the same thing goes if another drive fails again. If drive one fails, for example, then we know that these values must have been again, one, five, and two. So you can see that this basically works so long as you only have one of these drives that fails. If you've got two drives that fail, it's impossible to recalculate, but a RAID 5 array can sustain one drive failure. 
All right, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.